When we were kids, our mamas read us the story, Goldilocks and the Three Bears. Well, in today's video, it's gonna be Dennis and the Three Bars. Yes, I'm gonna be testing three different bars, two of them supposedly low carb or good for diabetics. The third one, not so much. The Snickers bar, the Atkins bar, Glucerna bar. We'll check them out and we'll see how do they affect blood sugar. When I had my wake-up call about approaching diabetes in 2001, the Atkins low-carb era was just at its conclusion. You could find all kinds of low-carb products in the stores, low-carb bagels, low-carb muffin mixes, low-carb milk, and there were stands that had all kinds of low-carb bars offered by several different companies. And the Atkins company was at full strength in those days. They were selling every low-carb product imaginable. I remember once ordering a low-carb pasta from them, which tasted absolutely terrible, and I never did that again. But in those days, low-carb was really hot in the market. But it wasn't much longer after that that the craze cooled off, dieters moved on to other diets, Robert Atkins died, and one by one, most of the low-carb products disappeared from the grocery stores. Now, you could always order low-carb products from companies on the internet or make your own products at home, and that was just about it. The Atkins company fell on hard times and eventually had to reorganize. Today, they're still around, but they make mostly low-carb bars. But now it's a new day. Keto has become huge and low-carb products are back. On today's video, I'm gonna compare three different bars. A regular Snickers bar, which we all know about, an Atkins bar, and a Glucerna bar. We'll be considering just how much they spike blood sugar for someone like me who doesn't handle carbs very well. Today, I'll be eating an Atkins bar, in this case, a chocolate almond caramel bar. On the front of the label, we learn it has 15 grams of protein, three net grams in the entire bar, one gram of sugar, and 10 grams of fiber. Now, whenever I'm considering a food product, I always go straight to the bottom line. And for me, the bottom line is the net grams of carbs for the portion size I plan to eat. Now, with this Atkins bar, it has 17 grams of carbs, which seems kind of high for such a small bar, but 10 of those grams are fiber grams, which should not raise my blood sugar much at all. Four of the grams are listed as glycerin, which according to Atkins should also not affect blood sugar much. So by their estimation, the entire bar is only gonna have three grams of carbs, which should affect my blood sugar. Now, if they're correct about this, my blood sugar should barely spike at all. And in fact, it might even drop down a few points after eating the bar. Will this be the case? We'll soon know. I tested my blood sugar a little bit ago and it was at 98. I'll eat the Atkins bar and then test it 30 minutes after eating and then one hour after eating. Remember that I always tend to have blood sugar peaks at about one hour after a meal. So the one hour post test should tell the tale. And if you haven't seen many of my videos, let me remind you that I take no blood sugar meds at all. So this is not gonna be a factor. All right, well, let's have a taste of this Atkins bar. Well, it tastes, as I thought it would, it tastes pretty good. The question, of course, what will it do to my blood sugar? See you after a while. Yesterday, I tested the Atkins bar, and now it's time to test the Glucerna bar. Now, Glucerna products for diabetics have been around for a long time, and the idea behind them is that you can enjoy a sweet treat that has been created with, quote, slow-release carbs that will not spike your blood sugar too much. I went on their website and watched a little video where they state, when the cravings hit, hit back, choose glucerna with slow release carbs to help manage blood sugar and start making everyday progress. And on the package of this bar, we read glucerna snack bars feature carb steady, which includes slow release carbohydrates to help minimize blood sugar spikes. And also we read on the package, these tasty bars are your perfect on-the-go snack. 
<laughs> well, it's hard to find fault with something this perfect, right? I've seen Glucerna products for years, and I have to admit this is the first time I've ever tried one. Why is that, you ask? Well, every time I looked at their products, the net grams of carbs just seemed too high. Granted, it was better than a normal candy bar or shake, but it was always higher than an Atkins bar or some of the other low-carb bars. Now, I know they boast about their slow-release carbs, but I'm always skeptical about these kinds of claims. If you remember when Ben and I tested Ezekiel bread, they boasted so much about being very low glycemic, and yet the blood sugar spike didn't at all match up with the claims. To me, the simplest way to evaluate a food's potential effect on my blood sugar has been, what are the total carbs minus the fiber carbs? So the slogan, slow-release carbs, doesn't really impress me too much, but I could be wrong. Now, this glucerna bar that I'll be eating today has 20 grams of carbs, and three of those grams are fiber carbs. Seven of the grams are sugar alcohols. So even if you deduct the fiber and the sugar alcohols, and by the way, you can never really predict the effect of sugar alcohols, but if you do deduct the fiber and the sugar alcohols, you're left with 10 grams of carbs. Now that's about a third of a Snickers bar, so it should definitely be better than that or any other candy bar that's a regular candy bar. But how will it compare with the Atkins bar and what kind of blood sugar spike will I get from it? Well, we'll soon know. I'm not having anything with the Glucerna bar, no food, no coffee, just the bar by itself and maybe a little water. So let's give it a try. Not very big, but uh, we'll see how it tastes. Well, like the Atkins bar, it tastes good. I have no problem with the taste. And uh, we'll be back in a little bit to let you know how this and the other tests came out. Okay, let's consider the tests. Now, I know what you're saying. Wait a minute. What about the Snickers bar test? Well, here's the deal about that. In my researching for my book, You Can Achieve Normal Blood Sugar, I did a test with a Snickers bar several years ago, and so I'm going to use the results from that test to compare it with these bars. Now, if you're thinking, well, I want a current Snickers bar test, all I can say is do one yourself. There is a limit to how much I'm going to abuse my body for these tests, and doing an updated Snickers bar test and jacking my blood sugar too high, only to find out that it differs a few points from the old older test is just not something I'm willing to do. So we'll go with the older test. Let's start with that test. When I tested a Snickers bar several years ago, I was at 103 before the test. I shut up to 161 30 minutes after eating the Snickers bar and then drifted up to 166 at the one hour mark when my blood glucose usually peaks. Now, with the Atkins bar test I did yesterday, I started at 98 before the test, went to 116 at 30 minutes, and then went down to 113 at the one-hour post-meal test. Significantly better than the Snickers bar. And with the Glucerna bar, which boasts of its slow-release carbs, I was at 105 before eating the bar. I went to 117 30 minutes after eating it, and by one hour I went slightly higher to 121. This made me curious if the slow release was going to keep on slowly releasing, <laughs> so I tested myself at one and a half hours, but by then it was on its way back down and was at 116. Were there any surprises? Well, not much really. Both the low-carb bars were pretty close. I thought the Atkins bar might do slightly better than it did since it only had three net grams of carbs if you don't count glycerin. An 18-point rise at 30 minutes is not huge, but it is something considering that I'm only dealing with 3 net grams of carbs. It was interesting for me to see how much better my blood sugar did with the Diet Coke and the Zevia, where my blood sugar hardly rose at all and ended up at one hour lower than when I started. This did not happen with either one of these low-carb bars. At one hour with the bars, I was significantly above where I started with both bars. I would guess that the reason is that both bars have a whole lot more ingredients, essentially a lot more food-type ingredients, than with the sodas. With the diet sodas, you're mostly dealing with flavored water, a little coloring, and a non-sugar sweetener. 
With the bars, you're actually dealing with what we'd call food, and it clearly raised my blood sugar more. It turned out that the slow-release carbs from the glucerna bar didn't seem to have that much effect. It performed about as I expected, and once again I found that the best and the most sure predictive formula for judging a food's ability to raise blood sugar is the net carbs, the total carbs minus the fiber. This has been a tried and true method for me to determine how foods affect my blood sugar, and it is rarely far off. So we might ask the question, why eat a low-carb bar in the first place? Well, according to Glucerna, you eat it when you need a snack. But with all the proven results from intermittent fasting and time-restricted eating, snacking is normally the last thing a type 2 diabetic needs to be doing. I mean, think about it. Just when your blood sugar is starting to go down, just when your insulin levels are moving toward normal, you stuff a snack in your mouth and here we go again. Glucose rises, insulin rises, and you don't do yourself much of a favor. If you really want a snack that doesn't raise blood sugar and does little to provoke insulin response, you might think about having a mug of coffee with some butter and cream, what we'd call bulletproof coffee. This can satisfy and should pretty much leave your glucose alone. The one way that these bars could be enjoyed would be as a little dessert to tack onto your dinner meal. As long as you have it immediately after your last bite of dinner, it won't have this effect of jacking up blood sugar while it's on its way down. But you have to keep in mind that they do raise blood sugar a bit all by themselves. So, for example, if your dinner is going to raise your blood sugar right up to the limit, which you feel is safe, and then you tack on a low-carb bar with that dinner, it's probably going to push your blood glucose right over the edge and you'll be in trouble. So if you ask my opinion of these low-carb bars, I'd say, eh, <laughs> I do eat Atkins bars once in a while with a meal, but always with that meal at the very end, not as a snack. Now, there are fat bombs that you can make or buy that might do better than these bars, so you might consider those. Okay, that's it. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and help our program to become known to more diabetics. And consider subscribing and then hit that little bell icon so you'll be notified every time we post a new video. And by the way, pray for Benedicta. She's in Nigeria now. I did an interview with her when I took her to the airport, and there's a link to that video and that interview in the description. God bless. See you again soon.